What is up, DFS family? Welcome back to the Sunday School NFL DFS podcast powered by Fantasy Six Pack. I am your host, Pat Mikowski. You can find me on Twitter at PattyMac33. Your co host, David Eddy, whom you can find on Twitter at Corporal Eddy. That's right. My 200-point roster last week obliterated David and in the process stuck a couple hundred bucks in my pocket. I'm once again behind the wheel. But before we get started, do us a quick favor. Hit that like button. If you enjoyed this podcast, do yourself a favor. Hit the subscribe button. If you want to keep a leg up on all your buddies, swing over to fantasysixpack.net. Check out some more great content. Just a reminder, we're talking DraftKings, Main Slate, MME tournaments. Say hello to the people, David. Uh, hey, how's it going? Um, should I start calling you Daddy, or would you prefer I just <laughs> would you prefer I kept it like professional and called you Patrick? Yeah, per- I'm good with professional for now. But if you get another spanking like you did last week, then we may have to change that up. Yeah, it's been a rough. Um, it's been a rough couple weeks, man. I, uh, oh well, this is what it is. Yeah, uh, pretty interesting football week last week. Looks like we got another one coming up for us over this weekend. So uh, why don't we start off, David? Tell the people what your gospel is this week. Well, I mean, got to go Alvin Kamara personally. Um, 8000 8, bucks against those dreadful fucking Lions. So, you know, you know I'm not a fan of paying up at quarterback. I literally say it every single week. I am, however, a fan of paying up at running back. And this is a fantastic matchup that would only get better if Michael Thomas doesn't play. And as we record this on Thursday evening, um, that's very much up in the air. Uh, So, so far, Kamara's averaging 19.3 touches a game. Uh, That's 8th best in the league. And he's getting 42% of the touches in that Saints offense. Um I mean, he gets his on the ground. He gets it in the air. Uh, he's facing a terrible Lions team. Game script is kind of irrelevant. Uh, whether they're ahead or behind, he's going to touch that rock. I am paying for a lot of Kamara this week. Yeah, I like that pick. Uh, you, you know, and, and for me, I'm going back to the well. Uh, I got Russ Wilson again. You know, he's the best player in the NFL. We talked about it a little bit last week. Uh, almost 40 points, fantasy points last week, five touchdowns. Uh, he's as close to a sure thing as there is right now. Uh, you know, $7,800 to get this guy. He's averaging over 36 fantasy points a game. The Dolphins give up over 280 yards a game to opposing QBs and over 25 fantasy points a game. I think this is an easy, another 30-point performance uh, for Big Russ. I'm going to lock him in. I mean, I don't know how anyone could argue with that. Russell Wilson against a terrible team. The worst thing I guess that could happen is that, you know, they, you know, they get up big, but that, you know, they, they score on the ground and, you know, let's say they get up 21, nothing in the first quarter on, you know, two rushing touchdowns and, and one passing touchdown. And then, you know, I don't know, they take a punt back and they're up 28, nothing. And then all of a sudden they're, they're just going to sit there and run the ball. That's it's about the only way that Russ isn't going to eat, you know? Yeah, I, I totally agree. That's one of the fears, but I, I think either way, um, either way he's going to get his share. So uh, how about your devil this week? Who are you fading, Dave? I tell you, this is hard because this is one of my favorite players, um, and he's in a pretty good matchup, which I think makes it, um, I don't know if I'd say sneaky, but I think it makes a nice a nice. Um, a nice fade, and and I'm gonna go uh, and fade DeAndre Hopkins. So he's 8,500 bucks. They're against the Panthers. Now Nuck is the highest priced player on the slate. Nobody is more expensive than him. And like I said, he has been just terrific this year. Uh, he's played 94% of snaps. Uh, he's got a remarkable 12 targets per game so far through the first three weeks. So this is definitely not a matter of me thinking that you know D Hop is a bad play this week. I, I think that he's one of those matchup proof players, and you can play him each week. I'm not even saying he's a bad play this week. He's just not for me. I think that you know going up against that terrible Panthers run defense, 
that this is another good spot for Kenyon Drake to have one of his blow-up games. Hasn't had one yet. He seems to kind of be, you know, the guy that will get you all or nothing. You know, well, not that he's been bad this year. He just hasn't been in the end zone. But, I mean, at his price tag, he's going to have to have a monster game just to justify it. It's just going to be someone that I am going to fade this week. Yeah, I like uh, I like Kenyon Drake in that as well. Uh, I think that 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 game script is is going to favor them uh, to run him quite a bit. Um, so yeah, I can definitely see how you would be fading on, on Hopkins, uh, even though, like you said, the guy Kyler Murray knows how to get the ball to him. So uh, it'll be interesting, anyways. Um, so I'm going to be fading, uh, the devil, uh, himself, Ezekiel Elliott, uh, in that Brownies versus Cowgirls game, you know, he's having a pretty solid season, almost 23 fantasy points a game in that high powered offense. Um, I'm anticipating them getting out to a pretty early lead as well. And they're going to pound that ball, but you know, the dog pound has been pretty solid against runs this year. Uh, they've only given up 62 yards a game and a measly 3.2 yards a carry. Uh, third highest price running back this week. I think I'm going to save a little bit of loot, look farther down the line, or I'm going to roll with your gospel. I'm going to roll with some Camara. There you go. Uh, at the running back position this week. So I'm going to fade Zeke. Yeah, man, the, the Cowboys are, are unique because, I mean, they've got so many pieces on offense, and I'm not even a big Dak fan, but you can't argue with the numbers that he puts up. And so it's kind of, un- well, I don't know if it's unfortunate, but, you know, it's kind of weird then that they also have one of the best running backs in the game. So right. um, it's hard for, for them both to do well in the same game, uh, you know, unless Zeke's catching a ton of passes. But now that they got lamb there that's just one more mouth to feed um you know in the passing game so you could argue a lot of times for either zeke to be your gospel or your devil it really is a unique situation yeah speaking of speaking of unique i kind of found your next one a little bit interesting why don't you share us what your archangel is for boy this uh interesting good interesting bad uh interesting in a good way oh why well thank you sir uh it means a lot coming from from daddy. <laughs> so my archangel this week is Deshaun Watson. Comes in at a beautiful sixty six hundred bucks uh, as the Texans go against the Vikings. I, I will say that Watson is one of the most talented quarterbacks in the league, which unfortunately doesn't mean shit in DFS. Um, but the arsenal at his disposal just you know took a massive hit. When the Texans basically swapped, you know, Hopkins, who we already talked about, for David Johnson. Now, I think that Watson is in a really good spot this week against a less than stellar Vikings defense. So, uh, you know, this is a game that features one of the highest over-unders of the week, but is kind of not really on the radar. Um, I think paying down to get to Watson this week makes a whole lot of sense. The question is, you know, who do you stack him with now? I don't think that Deshaun is going to, you know, get enough on the ground that, you know, running him naked makes a whole lot of sense. I don't trust Will Fuller. Um, I think Brandon Cooks is going to be my my stack option with him um, because there really is nobody else. I mean, at that you can't run him naked. I don't I don't trust him with Fuller. It leaves me with Cook. I do like running it back with Adam Thielen though. Hell, you could run it back with Dalvin Cook if you wanted to. That that'd make it a little bit more unique. But I think a lineup of Watson and Cook with either Thielen or 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 or, or the other Cook um, is 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 a pretty slick play this week. Yeah, I like it. And and the interesting part, you know, is kind of what you touched on. You know, the weapons he's got at his disposal. You know, Brandon Cooks. It seems like. He has a few really, he's one of those boomer bust guys and he just hasn't had that boom game yet. This could very well be that matchup. Uh, so I, I like what you're doing with Watson there. I mean, there is nobody on Minnesota to stop him. It's really a matter of either Watson looking somewhere else, Cooks getting hurt, or Cooks just pulling the Cooks, man, you know? Yeah. So, so for me, you know, my archangel, I'm going opposite of my gospel. I'm going with Ryan Fitzpatrick 
uh, at fifty four hundred dollars this week. Uh, the Hawks at the Finns. Give me some Fitz magic, man. I mean, he's going to be going blow for blow with the best quarterback slash player in the game. Seattle's going to put up a ton of points. The magic man is going to have to keep pace. Let's not forget that as amazing as Seattle's pass offense has been, their pass defense is the worst in the NFL. They're giving up a whopping 440 yards a game through the air, two touchdowns a game to opposing quarterbacks. If Ryan gets the chance to throw it 40 times, and I think he will, watch him pull a rabbit out of his hat this weekend. Big day for Fitzmagic. And for the price, man, 5,400 skins to get a guy that's going to throw the ball minimum 30 times. I don't see how you can miss on that. I mean, I'm not playing Fitzpatrick this week personally, but, um, you know, I, I think that it does give you some, some a lot of stacking options. Um, I mean, the, I think the obvious stack is, um, you know, with Fitzpatrick, uh, Devontae Parker, and then obviously yep. you bring it back with Lockin or Metcalf, but you also yep. can throw Gasecki in there. Um, so you've got a lot of combinations between, you know, between Fitzpatrick with either Ryan or Gasecki and then bringing it back with either Lockett or Metcalf. I mean, you've got a lot of ways you could run that. And it's, I don't know, it's going to be super unique, but it's going to be, it's going to be low owned. You know, would this one kind of fall into that Green Bay Aaron Jones category too? Maybe running it back with Carson? Well, I don't know that Carson's playing. <laughs> if he plays. Um, if he were to play. Um, that would be uh, quite, a, quite a different, unique stack. Mm, what to stack it with what oh to put fitzpatrick and carson uh, put carson oh, on the other side Fitz, yeah yeah fitzpatrick with parker and then in running instead of running back a receiver eh. or a receiver and carson see that's what i like no. to get a little a little different with a few players. no i I, so think, I think i'm gonna actually do that in a couple well i don't think that carson's playing so it's, i think it's irrelevant um but, I mean, you could, I wouldn't. But I don't like to run back a running back on the other side. It typically doesn't work. Um, the only reason that I suggested it with Watson is because we're talking about Dalvin Cook. Dalvin Cook's on a different planet than, you know, the healthiest Chris Carson's been in his entire life. Just my opinion. You, you clearly know more than I do this year. Um, so, I mean, what the <laughs> hell. But I, I wouldn't right. go Chris Carson as a run back. All right. Well, well how about a, how about a, your heresy for this week? Who's your contrarian play? Well, I don't know that I don't know how contrarian this is because, like, if you just straight up look at numbers, this is like a pretty obvious play. But he has yeah, been I've rostered him every single week. Yeah, so but he has been under. I mean, he has been low owned, and um, he definitely hasn't produced very well. Um, but Logan Thomas, man. Um, tight end Washington Wolf football team, whatever the fuck you call those idiots. Um, but it's only $3,500. Um, he is facing the Ravens. So I think that, you know, you combine, well, I'll get into the numbers here in just a second, but you combine, you know, the fact that he's really underachieved and he's facing a pretty damn good defense. I, I think that that's what makes him a contrarian this week. But, you know, he's the third most targeted tight end in the game. Of course, he plays with Dwayne Trashkins at quarterback, so that that really hurts him. But, I mean, at $3,500, man, his price is right. And you, you have a hard time arguing with the 90% snap count he's had so far this year and a 24% target share, which at tight end is phenomenal. It's only second behind Darren Waller. So even though it's burned me between Logan Thomas and Chris Herndon um, so far this year, Give me some Logan Thomas, save a little bit of money, and if he scores, which is entirely possible, as game script will probably indicate that they'll be, you know, chasing the Ravens on the scoreboard, he's going to be a fantastic value. Yeah, I I like this play. Um, he's probably going to be the tight end that I throw in there again this week. Uh, I think last week I actually had him in a hundred percent of my lineups. Um, I don't think I've had him less than 75% of my lineups at all this year. He's just, he's not getting the love. His price point has not changed this year. Uh, and I think that's just a result of trash can throwing him the ball. So, And of course you love that he's a former lion, correct? <laughs> 
Oh yeah, yeah, that's exactly the reason why I love them. Because uh, yeah, I mean everybody you know that leaves us it turns into a halfway decent football player. So yeah, but definitely not a head coach. This is where head coaches come to die, my friend. That is absolutely true. Hopefully, uh, soon to be the case uh, with the one we currently have. Uh, anywho, uh, my heresy this week, Dave, is Nick Chubb. I'm going back to that Brownies versus Cowgirls game. You know, Dallas has been pretty stout against the run. Uh, they haven't given up a rushing touchdown since week one. Not a matchup that typically would favor a runner like Chubb, but possibly as of today, no Kareem Hunt this week. Uh, he could be in line for some extra touches, and it just does not matter. Uh, the opponent or the game plan, Cleveland is going to turn around. They're going to hand the ball off to this guy 20 times. Uh, this former and current dog uh, is chewing up almost six yards of carry this season. I just, because of the matchup, I, I don't see him being rostered at a very high rate. Uh, I'm going to let the dog eat this week. I got Chubb. You said you have a Chubb? Yes. Oh, okay. Let's double yes. check. I thought you said that. <laughs> and I was like, I don't want to get excited for no reason. I want to make sure that's what you really said. There we go. So now we can both be excited. Hail Mary. Who, who's your Hail Mary this weekend, David? Oh, man. I, do you have Google open, Patrick? I don't. I currently have no internet at my Ugh. house. So, All right. Uh, well, if you had yeah. it, if you had it, I would say type in Demir Bird. He's 30. Well, no, not even. He's at the minimum. He's $3,000. Uh, Patriots wide receiver going up against the Chiefs. So, I mean, Bird coming in at the minimum price is obviously, you know, nice um, as far as, you know, just salary is concerned. But what's even nicer than that is do you want to take a, a stab at what percentage of plays that he has uh, played this year for the Patriots? Uh, nope. If I said 90%, would that would that excite you? Uh that is interesting. Yeah, he has been on the field for 90% of the Patriots' plays this year. In week two, when Cam went crazy through the air, he had nine targets. Now, he's only averaging four targets so far on the young season. Uh, but playing against the Chiefs, I expect that the Patriots will have to open up the offense a little bit and that Cam's going to need to throw the ball more than they're comfortable with. That's exactly the game script that gives Bird upside. So... The way I look at it, it only takes nine points, which could be as simple as five catches for 40 yards for him to hit that 3x value that we're looking for. God forbid the dude hits the end zone because that would make this play just jump off the charts, man. Yeah, that's uh, that's some pretty uh, impressive statistical research that you did there. I, I never, When you're talking about on the field I, I have my, I have my plays, people, I yeah. mean. I have my people do yeah, the yeah. research. <laughs> Okay, well, you got some uh, some people with a lot of time on their hands to find that one, I think. So, uh, you know, for me, I'm I'm sticking at the wide receiver spot too. I'm going back to the Brownies and the Cowgirls game, though. Uh, yeah, I got Cedric Wilson, thirty two hundred bucks. He had seven targets last week to the tune of one hundred and seven yards, two TDs. Yes, he is number four on that depth chart, but. As we've said 30 times so far this year, this is a high-powered passing game, offensive weapon. The potential here for Dallas to blow the Brownies right out of Jerry's world, uh, it's there. If that's the case, you might see Cooper, you might see Gallup get a few extra blows here and there. Uh, that's more targets heading towards Wilson. Uh, so uh, I like said Wilson. Could be in for another another big day. And as you mentioned, you know, 3X is, is five catches for 40 yards. So uh, worth the gamble for me. Uh, what else do you think, Dave? You got anything else uh, on your brain you want to share with the people? Not really, man. Just um, I'm thinking Deshaun Watson. I think, uh, I think that's going to be... I don't know if it's going to be what's going to make or break me, but he will probably be my highest-owned quarterback. But um, even with that said, I'll 
probably limit that to about 30% of my of my 20 max lineups. But Kamara, on the other hand, I'm probably gonna let I'm probably gonna let him ride up to oh man, 75, 80 percent. I'm gonna have a lot of Kamara this week. Yeah, I, I agree. I think that I think Kamara is gonna be uh, a staple in, in, in pretty much every lineup uh, that's gonna do anything uh, as far as winning some money this week. I think you're gonna have to have him in there. So okay, well if you got nothing else, I don't either. Um, we will catch you all on the flip side. Have yourself a great weekend. Uh, We'll see you next week.